Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Zach Peterson. I'm a technical consultant with Altium. And today we're gonna answer a pretty basic question. What is a transmission line? This is a question I sometimes see asked on forums. Uh, sometimes I see it asked in uh, comments on YouTube videos. And so we wanna run over this because it's actually not that difficult of a question to answer, but I think for new designers, it evokes this idea that a transmission line is something totally different from what you normally do on a PCB. Let's go ahead and get started. So what is a transmission line? Transmission line is really simple, at least when it comes to the PCB. When you're on a PCB, a transmission line is basically just a very long trace. That's it, it's really that simple. Now, when I say long, you have to actually quantify that because long could mean different things in different contexts. Is a one inch transmission line long or is a 10 inch transmission line long? It depends. So generally when we wanna quantify what is the length of a trace that causes it to qualify as a transmission line, we look at a few possible things. And if you look at different guides on the internet, you'll see different people creating different criteria for what actually qualifies as a transmission line. And this is one of those things where, frankly, nobody can agree. You'll see 10 different people give 10 different answers, and it's kind of unfortunate, but it reflects the reality that there really is no fixed length at which a trace stops acting like a simple conductor and starts acting like a transmission line. And then you'll need to start using all of the math that we're gonna detail in some upcoming videos, specifically looking at the impedance of that trace and why controlling that impedance is important. The first criteria that someone might use to qualify whether a trace is a transmission line is the rise time. And this is the case for digital signals. Now, if I graph the, let's just say the voltage of a digital signal over time, it might look something like this, okay? And when I say the rise time, this is the rise time here. And it's the time required for this signal to rise up to its full strength. Typically, and I said full strength, but typically what you use is the 10% level and then the 90% level. So this time between here and here, T sub R, is typically used to qualify whether a trace is a transmission line. Now you might say, hey, this is a time, a trace has length. How are you comparing those two? Well, what you do is you'll actually compare the distance that the signal travels in this time frame to the length of the trace. And this is where people start to disagree about whether or not a trace is really a transmission line or really just a simple conductor. If I take the signal rise time and then I multiply it by the velocity of the signal and then I get a length. So we'll just call it the, uh, I like to call it the rise length, meaning it's the length that the signal will travel during this period while it's actually rising up to this level here shown on the graph. So this is a length. And so when this length is comparable, so on the order of the length of my trace, then my trace is prone to exhibiting the behavior that you would see on a transmission line. So then we need to worry about impedance. And more specifically, we need to worry about termination. And so we're gonna discuss the impedance and termination in two upcoming videos. So the impedance here is the characteristic impedance, and then termination is actually referring to another quantity or another type of impedance called the input impedance. And so when the trace length is very short, essentially what happens is the entire full strength signal is spread across the entire trace. So it's almost like the signal isn't even moving. It exists everywhere on the trace at once. So you just need to compare this quantity and this quantity. So this is where people start to disagree. Because when you say on the order of, I mean, do you mean, well, you know, my rise length has to be, uh, let's say less than, you know, I don't know, 10% of the trace length? 
or is it 20% or you know, what is that fraction? This is where nobody can really agree. And I'm sure there's gonna be someone that comes into the comments and says, hey, you know, Eric Bogatin says this or Rick Hartley says this or, you know, listen, there's gonna be 10 other guys that say 10 other things, okay? There is no fixed number here at, at which point this trace suddenly stops being a trace and suddenly starts being a transmission line. My view is, if you're working with a high-speed signal, and we've discussed high-speed signals in another video, but if you're working with a high-speed signaling standard and it has an impedance defined in it, so there's an impedance requirement, just always design to the impedance requirement. Don't worry about, hey, am I too long, am I too short? Just design the trace to have the required impedance you won't even have to worry about all this stuff. It's always gonna be operating correctly. Well, it should always be operating correctly. So you should always make sure to test those boards if you can. The second possible criterion that someone might use to define whether or not a trace is really a simple conductor or a transmission line is a wavelength. This is yet another area where nobody can agree. One of the reasons is that they're actually using a wavelength to describe digital signals. The problem is that digital signals do not have just one wavelength. Digital signals have frequency content that spans from very low frequency, DC, all the way out to infinity. If you have an infinite number of frequency components that make up your digital circuit, what's its wavelength? Well, logically the answer would be that there's an infinite number of wavelengths, so you can't use a wavelength with a digital signal. If I draw out my digital signal here, and I define my rise time required to reach to this full strength, sometimes what I've seen people do is they'll say, oh, well, this rise time, you can convert it to a frequency, and then from that, you can use the speed of light to calculate a wavelength. And then they'll say something like, well, you know, if, if wavelength uh, divided by four is proportional to your trace length, then this is a transmission line. Someone else will come in and say, well, no, it's wavelength divided by six. Someone else will come in and say, it's wavelength divided by 10. Someone else will come in and say, no, they're, you're all wrong, it's wavelength divided by eight. Ignore all that, they're all wrong. This is because with a digital signal, you do not have a single wavelength. So with a digital signal, if you are going to use some sort of quality of the signal to determine whether or not a trace should be treated as a transmission line, Look at the rise time, don't try to get a wavelength because the wavelength that you're gonna use is probably gonna be wrong because again, digital signals do not have a wavelength. Now, wavelength is sometimes brought up in the context of an analog signal. Now, this is where you are more likely to be correct because an analog signal that has a single frequency does have a single wavelength. So I'm just gonna draw out going to try and draw out anyways, a sine wave. It's not a bad sine wave. Now this sine wave, if this is in time, and let's just say uh, this is my voltage, here, this period in time is my period, and now my frequency is just one over that period, okay? So from here, using the velocity of that wave in the substrate, which again, you can calculate that just using, uh, I mean, there are calculators online that you can use to get this velocity. This velocity is just going to be lambda times F. So the wavelength I can get from just solving this equation, lambda is V over F, okay? So this is the speed of light along that interconnect, and then this is the frequency, and then this is the wavelength. Now here, you can actually make some statement about when a trace is really a transmission line. And this is gonna be using, again, the input impedance looking into that transmission line. So there's gonna be a link to a video on input impedance that we have, and that video is gonna be upcoming. You should take a look at that video, because that video is gonna explain input impedance Later in another video, we'll look at input impedance of analog signals and specifically how this wavelength can be used to determine when a trace stops acting like just a trace and when it acts like a transmission line and some really special cases of when your wavelength versus your trace length create some interesting behavior in a transmission line. So you might have a unterminated transmission line that acts like a short circuit, have a short circuited transmission line that acts like it's unterminated or it's like a totally open circuit. There are all sorts of interesting behavior that actually happens with analog signals 
and their input impedance. And it is due to the fact that analog signals do have an actual wavelength. You can plug that into the input impedance equation and that's what's gonna help you determine when you need to apply termination and when you should leave it open or short circuited. So we'll discuss all of that in an upcoming video. That's gonna be a lot of fun because it is actually something really fundamental in RF design. We've actually gotten a couple of questions on RF design, so I do wanna cover those topics in the upcoming videos. Okay, everybody, so I've gone on long enough about when is a trace a transmission line or when is a transmission line not a trace. The bottom line is, if you're working with a signaling standard that requires a fixed impedance, just design to that impedance, it's actually not that difficult when you use something like Altium Designer. Altium Designer's field solver that's built into the layer stack manager, it'll calculate the trace width that you need for you. You don't really have to worry about when you should make the trace too thin, when you should make it too wide. You're gonna have a set width that you need for your trace, and that's gonna determine the impedance of that interconnect regardless of its length. You're not gonna have to worry about these questions of when it is or is isn't a transmission line. Okay, so that's all we've got for today, folks. We're gonna come back and do more videos on this. Stay tuned for the videos on characteristic impedance of transmission line and input impedances. Hopefully you like this video, and if you do like it, hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos, hit the subscribe button. Leave your comments and questions in the comments section, and we're gonna have some links in the description. You can go and download a free trial of Altium Designer. You can also see some great blogs in the description. Go read those to learn more. Thanks everybody, and uh, don't forget to call your fabricator.